Hello and welcome to the Phoenix Mentality Podcast. I am your host, Shane Hubbard. Today's episode is going to be about 10 mindset shifts to help you get back into a fitness routine. So I spent a lot of time coming up with these 10, and while this might be an evolving list, I felt like these 10 were the best things to get started, especially for episode two. So I'm going to read them off to you. Their mottos, their creeds, their whatever you want to call them, but it's the foundation of what this podcast is all about and a very important mindset shift for you when you are either starting or beginning again your fitness routine. These are not in any particular order, so it's not like one is more important than 10. These are just the order that I came up with them. So creed number one, for every obstacle, adapt. For every setback, reignite. For every success, celebrate. And I want to focus a little bit more on that last piece. For every success, celebrate. It isn't talked about enough that you need to celebrate the times when you do have success. You don't need to have like a blowout party necessarily, but you need to feel good and you need to take a moment to realize when you make progress, when you succeed at something. Because if you're consistently only focusing on the things that you don't do well, it's very hard to maintain a consistent routine with anything involving self-improvement and self-transformation. So never discount even small wins. Maybe you wake up one morning and you don't want to work out, but you do anyway. That's a success because what were you doing before? You were going back to sleep. You were shutting off your alarm. You were putting it on snooze for another 10 minutes. That's a success. When you get up and you actually get into the gym or get into your you know area where you're going to work out, that's a success. It might seem like an uncommon success. It might not seem that big of a deal, but it is a big deal because it's movement towards change and any movement towards change is important. So that's why that first part is really, really important. The other thing you have to realize is that you're always going to be met with obstacles and the only option you have is to adapt. Maybe adapt and reflect or reflect and adapt. That's fine. But you, you always need to pivot. You always need to find a way around that obstacle. I did not do a very good job of this when my daughter was born. And for the two years until now, I did not do a good job at this. But as I reflected and looked back on what I could have done better, I realized there was plenty of opportunities to take what was given to me and try to pivot it in a different direction. And there were attempts, none were very successful, but I'm back at it again. And that's an important thing to realize is is that your first attempt is probably not going to be successful. Your 10th attempt may be a little bit more successful, maybe a little bit more than what your first one was like. Maybe by your 100th attempt, you finally get to the point where you're like, I've got a routine, I've got a habit, I'm building healthy situations in my life, I'm taking control, I'm taking action, I'm prioritizing, whatever it might be. It doesn't matter if it's the first, first, the 10th, or the 100th, which is another creed we'll talk about. What's important is, is that you get going and you, you continue that progress. So that's creed number one. Number two, effort over quality and quality over quantity. So that might sound kind of odd. Why would effort be more important than quality? Don't you want quality to be at the very first part of that? Here's why that's not true. When you're building a habit, what's more important than anything is the effort that you put into that habit. So let's give a gym scenario, for example. Let's say that you wake up at 5 a.m. to go to the gym because that's just the only time you have available. You get to the gym, you sit there, and you're like, I'm not even awake yet. Why am I here? It doesn't matter. I'm not working out. And you decide to leave. You might consider that a failure, but that's actually a success. And that's because you put the effort in. The quality wasn't there and the quantity wasn't there, but you put in the effort. So when you're building habits in the very beginning, whether you're starting over or starting for the first time, the most important thing is the effort, which means if you drive to the gym and you just sit there and then you leave and you didn't work out at all, that's still a success because you have to measure your successes based on who you were yesterday, not who the guy who's been at the gym for 10, 15 years. You have to measure your successes against your past failures. And if there's a difference between those two, that's a success. It might not feel the greatest, but you have to keep track of those like we talked about in the the first creed. So effort is more important than quality, but quality is more important than quantity. So what do I mean by that? In the beginning, once you get the effort down, the quality of your workout is more important than how many you get in a week. So if you get one really good workout where you're dialed in, you've got everything, you know, in, in a row, you're hitting all of your reps and all of your sets, that's quality. But if you only do that once a week, you might think, well, what's that going to do? 
Well, it might not do a ton right now, but we're still in that developmental stage of the routine. We're still developing the habit. We're still getting in the flow of making this something that just becomes second nature to us. So quality is more important than quantity. As we develop the effort and get the habit and get it locked in and get the quality of our workouts dialed in as well, then it's about quantity. Would you rather copy and paste something that's a half-ass effort or would you rather copy and paste something that's as close to dialed in and perfect as it can be. I'd rather take the most successful and the most well-built single effort and multiply that than try to multiply a half-assed effort three or four more times. So that's why effort is more important than quality and quality is more important than quantity. That's number two. Number three, it doesn't matter how many times you start over as long as you start again. So going back to what we talked about a little bit earlier, it doesn't matter if it's your first, your 10th, or your 100th attempt. The point is, is that you always start again once you fall off. That, if I had to pick one of these creeds, they're all, I think they all embody what this podcast and this mentality is about. But if I had to borrow and represent the Phoenix mentality with one creed, it's that one. Because you're going to go through different stages in your life, you're going to go through different struggles, and they're all going to have a unique component to them. And they're all going to need some sort of adjustment to your mentality. Before I had my daughter and before my schedule became very tight knit and very routine, I had the freedom of almost the entire day to figure out when to work out, when to meal prep, do all that stuff. Now I have to be very diligent about when I do things because I don't have any extra time to play around with. So that's my current stage of life. Well, I've had to learn how to take all the things that I've learned and all the freedom that I had with time and make it work in this new lifestyle. And and that's going to happen again at some point in my life. And it's going to happen a third, a fourth, a fifth time. There's so many different situations where that is going to happen. And so you have to be willing to understand that this time that you're in right now, the approach that you create might not carry over to the next one. And it might take some time to figure out how to make it work and how to, you know, take what you learned and apply it to this new situation, but you have to be willing to adapt. And that's why it's such an important thing to reevaluate and readjust when new obstacles get in your way. All right. Number four is a little bit more of like a doomsday prepping type of scenario. If nothing else is working for you in your fitness journey, this is what you can do. When in doubt, walk, lift weights and eat protein. So I mentioned in episode one that I wasn't going to dive into like meal plans and, you know, workout plans and things like that. Cause you have all of that stuff. There's people that are better than me writing workouts, putting them online, nutrition plans, putting them online. There's professional coaches that make money doing this and make a living doing this because they're in the trenches every single day. That's not what I'm going to do, but I will share some very casual and important things that I've learned along the way when it comes to what are the most important things you need to focus on. The things that have stood the test of time have been the most beneficial and have been the easiest to repeat and make a habit of is lifting weights in any sort of capacity that you want, walking. So many people underestimate the power of walking and eating protein. In my time as a coach, I'd say about 95% of the people that I, that I coached on nutrition did not have the proper amount of protein dialed in per day. It was the one thing that we always worked on first, the protein, which just wasn't there. Some people knew they needed more protein, but they had no idea how much and like what the servings were and what the goals were from a gram standpoint. So if you can do those three things, if that's literally your plan starting right now is to lift weights, walk often every day if you can, if you can't as often as you can and eat more protein, you will be in a better starting place than probably like 80 to 90% of people that are trying to do the same thing that you're doing. All right, number five is a mentality that I think is good to keep in mind, especially in the world we live in today, where we are a very privileged society when you look at the human experience throughout history. Number five is nothing given, everything earned. No one owes you a fit body. No one owes you an easy nutrition route. No one owes you anything. If you're in a place right now where you don't like where you're at, you're the only one that can change that. So nothing is going to be given to you. Opportunities might arise but you still have to take the opportunity. When you earn your body through reps and sets and dialing in your nutrition and pushing through the moments where it feels like, why is this even worth it? That is a very good feeling. And if you are somebody who is dealing with self-doubt, poor self-esteem, those are things that I've dealt with throughout my entire life. And fitness helped me combat that tremendously. There's still things that I struggle with, and I think I'll probably always struggle with it to some extent, 
But for you, if you're in a very low place right now, nothing's going to empower you more than taking control of your health. Your mood's going to improve. Your body's going to improve. Your mental clarity and your mental focus and your confidence is going to improve. There's really no downsides with taking control of your health. It literally is going to change your life. So however fast or slow you make the commitment to do it, as soon as you do, life will start improving. So you have to keep that in mind that nothing is given, everything is earned, and until you do the reps, nothing's going to change. All right, we're on to number six. You control the outcome of your life by focusing on the present, preparing for the future, and learning from the past. We can go really deep into this, but just breaking down those three tenses of life. When you're in the moment, just focus on the moment. We're not thinking about the future. We're not thinking about the past. When you're in your workout, you're dialed in. This is what you're focusing on. Reps, sets, weights, get it done. When you're thinking about what you want your life to look like, that's the future. We prepare for the future. We plan for the future. We look at the future and we go, what can I do in two weeks, three weeks, four weeks? What am I going to look like in a year? All of these things. Now the past, we learn from the past, but we don't dwell on it. This is a big one for me. And I still struggle with this. Like every week, there's something in, from my past that I'm like trying to disconnect from and trying not to let it consume my present moment and certainly not affect my future. But the past is meant to be learned from and then let go of. Learn and let go. That's the motto that I give myself. I'm not always successful at it, but it's the motto that I give myself. And it has made improvements in my life that I can measure reasonably and say, that's my old self. That's my old life. I'm learning from it and I'm moving on. Number seven might be one of my favorite because it's the one that I'm doing right now. Waiting until you feel like it is the best way to never see results. This one applies to me a lot. When I was a fitness coach, I had an easier time doing things I didn't want to do because they were the right thing to do. They were the necessary thing to do. It's what needed to get done and it was the responsibility. As I've moved away from that lifestyle, it's become easier to just make excuses and not do things. Yesterday during my daughter's nap, I was about to fall asleep. Like I was like, I need to take a nap. But I said, you know what? I got to get a workout. I got to get three workouts this week. It's Saturday. I got two days. I'm either going to do it today or do it tomorrow. So despite feeling like I was going to fall asleep, I went out and I did some bench press. I did some upper back exercises. I worked out. And sure enough, probably within 10 minutes, I didn't feel like I needed to take a nap anymore. Now, the taking care of an infant and toddler, Shane, might have said, you know what? Sleep should be more important in that scenario. And in some cases, that might be true. I'm not saying this is a black and white, all or nothing thing. But as I started this journey, I've realized there's never going to be a perfect moment. Very rarely am I going to feel like it, but it needs to get done. The meal prep needs to get done. Don't feel like doing it. Waking up in the morning really early to work out. Certainly don't feel like it. Going to do it anyway. Needs to get done. Saying no to the potluck at work because I've got my nutrition plans. Don't like it. Don't want to do it. Still going to do it. Now, I'm not saying that if you're in a scenario where there's food and you, you can't have somebody, I'm not trying to be a restrictive, give you a restrictive mindset. But what I am trying to say is when you are dialed in, that is your focus. And there are things that are going to come at you from the outside world. They're going to try to pull you into the lifestyle that everyone else is living. Everyone is on this track. If they're, if they're not trying to control their health, almost everyone is just on a conveyor belt that's taking them to sickness. Like that's how our, our, our lives are set up these days. The food system, not that great, especially not in America. The medical system is just waiting for you to get to a point where you need them. And then from there, you're on medication, you're sick, you're in pain, all of these things. It all leads to the same place. So if you don't take control of your health, that's where you're headed. There's no like alternative route. You have to take control or you just become another statistic in the medical system who's diabetic, who's on, you know, five medications, who's doing all of these different things because of things you could have prevented earlier on in your life. And I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just trying to give you a realistic picture of what it's going to look like because that's what happens. So if you don't care and you want to go down that route and you're like, screw it, I, I'm paying for my medical care. I might as well get whatever I want. That's fine. I'm not here to tell you what to do, but I am saying if that scares you, if you don't want that reality for yourself, you have to take control. No one else is going to do it for you. All right. Number eight is if you're not seeing results, give it a year. Like I, this, that about as plain as I can put it, like you need to give it more time. The way that you were marketed was a complete lie. So get in your head that you need at least a year. That's the best advice I can give you in regards to that. And I think that's a good thing to keep in mind through this podcast. All right, number nine is identify who you want to become before you become that 
person. So if you want to be a fit person, find out what they do and just emulate it to your best ability. Just emulate it. Because when you become the identity that you want to be, it's easier to say no to your old identity because you have a new one and it's something that makes you happy. All right. The last one, number 10 is do the exercises you hate the least and eat the food that you like the most. If you like grapes, eat grapes. Even though there's somebody out there that's saying fruit is sugar and it's poison and they're sugar bombs. Screw that person. They don't know what they're talking about. Do the exercises you hate the least because a lot of times you're not going to want to exercise. But if you focus on the ones that are building parts of your body that you really want to build, that's going to make you feel good and you need to start there. Yes, it would be great if you did a full body workout and every part of your body was improved. But when you're starting off or when you're in a rut, start with the stuff that you like to do, whether it's the meals you like to eat or the exercises that you like to do, or at the very least, the body parts that you want to improve. If you can do that, it be, there's one less thing, there's one less barrier of entry that you have to try to make. So anyway, those are the 10 creeds. Thanks a ton for listening or watching this episode. Stay tuned for more episodes and don't forget to follow on social media at Shane Hubbard Fit on Instagram and at Shane Hubbard Fit on YouTube. I'll see you in the next episode.